Factoring trinomials. A trinomial means that you have three terms. For example, 4w to the second plus 9w plus 2. I'm going to show you what is called the AC method for factoring. It's called the AC method because if you remember, we have A, B, and C for our coefficients. So AC method looks for the coefficient of your square term and your constant term. So when we have our AC method, what that means is we multiply A times C. So in this case, if we multiply 4 times 2, we get 8. And then what we need to do is think about the factors of 8 where we can add them together and get 9. So for example, if we're looking at 8, well, 8 is 1 times 8, 2 times 4, and I think that's all the factors of 8. So if I add 1 plus 8, I'm going to get 9. If I add 2 plus 4, I get 6. I need 9, so 1 and 8 right here are the factors we want to use. So the reason we did that is we're going to split our 9w from right here, and we're going to split it into two parts. We're going to make it 1w plus 8w, because that'll give us 9w. When we do that, we have 4w squared plus 1w plus 8w, and then our plus 2 from right here. The reason that we did this is because now we can group and factor by grouping. If I look at 4w to the second and 1w, what do we have that's in common? Well, between 4w and w, we, 4w to the second and w, we have a w in common. So if I pull out a w from both of these, I'm left with 4w plus 1. Then we look over here. Well, we know it has to be 4w plus 1 when we're finished because of our factor by grouping. So if I have 8 and 2, I can pull out a 2. If I pull out a 2, then I have 2 times 4w plus 1. What's in common now is 4w plus 1. What's left over? w plus 2. This is our factored form of this. There are multiple different ways to go about factoring. The good part about using the AC method is it, use, is it works every single time. You can use it any time you're trying to factor a trinomial. Let's try again. Five x squared minus eleven x plus six. So we're going to use the AC method again. So the AC method says that we take a times c. Well, a is our coefficient of our x squared of our highest power term, and c is our constant. So a times c is going to give us 5 times 6, and that equals 30. Now notice here I have negative 11. So that means I need to consider my factors of 30 that are going to give me negative 11. So let's see if we can get this to work. Factors of 30. Well, let's see. 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10. I like to go down one side in order because then I know I don't miss any. 4 doesn't work. 5 and 6. Now if I were to go to the next one, it would just be 6 and 5. So now I've reached what I call the turnaround point. So 5 and 6, the next one would be 6 and 5. So all it's going to come next is just going to be working straight back up my list. So now I have all the factors of 30. Well, if I add 1 plus 30, I'm going to get 31. I need negative 11, so adding isn't going to do the trick. Well, if I have 1 and 30 and I subtracted them, I'm going to get 29. We can make it positive 29 by doing 30 minus 1, or we can make it negative 29 by doing 9 minus 30. But in either case, I need 11, not 29. 2 and 15. If I add them, I'm going to get 17. If I subtract, I'm going to get 13. That doesn't help. 3 and 10. If I add, I get 13. If I subtract, I get 7. Also doesn't help. 5 and 6. If I add, I get 11. If I subtract, I get 1. But I was able to get 11. I need negative 11. Well, if I considered negative 5 plus negative 6, that would give me negative 11. So it looks like we found our winner. 
So we can rewrite our negative 11x right here, and we can make that negative 5x minus 6x, because negative 5x minus 6x gives us negative 11x. Now we have some things in common, so we can do our grouping. Well, what's in common for the first one? I have 5x to the second and 5x. So what's in common here is a 5 and an x. If I pull out 5 from 5x squared, if I pull out 5x from 5x squared, I'm left with just x. If I pull out 5x from 5x, I'm left with just minus 1. You have to be able to distribute it back. So think about distributing it back. Think about we had negative 5x. We divided that by 5x because that's what we pulled out. And that leaves us with negative 1 right there. Now I know I have to have x minus 1 when I'm finished. So let's think about what we can do. I have negative 6x plus 6. I need x minus 1. So that means I need to pull out what's in common, which in this case is a negative 6. Now we look to see what do we have in common. Well, we have x minus 1 in common. So if I pull x minus 1 out, we're left with 5x. If I pull x minus 1 out, we're left with minus 6. So that is our factored form of this. There's many different ways to factor. Guess and check using a box method. This is the AC method, and I like this method because, again, it works every single time. Let's try another one. Let's say we have 3x squared plus 4x minus 9. So same thing, let's use our AC method. So AC method says that we have to put it in order, x squared, x, the constant term, and we multiply a times c. So that gives us 3 times 9. 3 times 9 is 27. So now I need the factors of 27, and I need them to be able to give us 4. I have a positive 4 here, so let's see what we can do. Factors of 27 are 1 and 27. 2 doesn't work. 3 and 9. And I think that's all that we're going to get. So let's see. 1 plus 27 gives us 28. That's not 4. 1 minus 27 gives us 26 or negative 26. Also not 4. 3 plus 9 gives us 12. Not 4. 3 minus 9, if we do our subtraction, we can get 6. Or 9 minus 3, we can... Uh, 3 minus 9, we can get negative 6. 9 minus 3, we can get positive 6. But that's also not 4. There are no other factors of 27, so this one doesn't factor. There's no real factors in this case. Let's try one more. Now this one looks tricky. It looks tricky because we have the y to the fourth and y to the second. Well, it would not solve any differently if this was y to the second minus y minus 12. Because see here how we have to the fourth and then we half that we have to the second. Here we have to the second, we half that we have to the first. So these are the same relation. If you wanted to, you could use some substitution and say let, let's not use y because we already have y. Let's say let w equal y to the second. And by doing that, you could replace this right here. It would become w to the second because y to the second, y to the fourth would be y to the second to the second minus w to the second, which we're replacing with y minus 12. And if that makes it easier to look at, you can use that substitution step before you would start simplifying. So now we can use our AC method again, and we can simplify this down by factoring. So we would have a 1 right here. So we have 1 times negative 12. So that's going to give us our 1 times 12 is 12. We want it to be a result of negative right here. Wrong one. We want it to be a result of negative 1 right here. There we go. So now we need to think of the numbers that multiply together to get 12, but when we add or subtract, we get negative 1. So for example, let's make our list. We have 1 and 12. We have 2 and 6. We have 3 and 4. And then if I do 4 and 3, see how that's the turnaround, and it's just going to go right back up. So I'm still working on getting a negative 1. Adding and subtracting 1 and 12, not going to work. 2 and 6, not going to work. 
but 3 and 4 will. If I have a positive 3 and a negative 4, when I add those together, I'll get negative 1. So that's what we're going to use. So that means we have w to the second minus 4w plus 3w minus 12. Let's do our grouping. What's in common between w to the second and minus 4w? If we pull out a w, we're left with w minus 4. Now I know this needs to leave me with w minus 4, so let's see what's in common between 3w and 12. I can pull out a 3. Now what's in common is a w minus 4. And if I pull out w minus 4 from both, I'm left with w plus 3. But wait, we didn't start with w. We said that w was really replacing y to the second. So let's go ahead and put our y to the second back in where we had our w. There we go. So we used a little bit of a substitution step and our AC method together to factor this one down.